Move or not to remove the red line? That is the question that has sparked a great deal of debate amongst Namibians from all walks of life. Some are for the idea to do away with the fence or move it further up north so that all Namibian livestock farmers can have a slice of the very lucrative Namibian meat pie. Others, on the other hand, feel that getting rid of the red line will endanger and compromise one of the biggest contributors to the Namibian economy. To weigh in on that and also touch on how Namibia has been exploring new markets in West and Central Africa in a quest to secure competitive and sustainable markets for the northern communal areas livestock farmers, we're joined by Mitko's CEO, Mulima Mushoka Banji. Very good evening to you, Mulima, and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you so much. Good evening, Namibians. Mm -hmm. Firstly, Wilima, the infamous veterinary cordon fence, better known as the red line, has been the apple of discord for years. What do you make of the current discourse around this very pertinent issue? Uh, thank you so much. Look, um, the veterinary cordon fence has been a painful knee on the neck of the northern of the communal producers. The VCF has made it difficult for the farmers to breathe. And I think the message coming out of there is the fact that farmers cannot breathe. We need to remove the VCF, but they can breathe because it opens up an economic opportunity. But then I think the point of debate is how do we go about that process? And that's what I would want to really unpack from an agricultural policy perspective. Now, this is how you deal with the issue of the veterinary cordon fence. Yes, historically, it had so many other reasons on why we set it up. But at this point in time, uh, we have invested a lot of research to find out in terms of what strategies can we unpack to deal with the northern of the communal area. And the key strategy is that we all know that we live in a century in which markets push production, unlike the 16th century whereby production was pulling markets. So each and every market that you open up, they have got their own specifications which you need to meet as a country. So the first strategy in removing the knee that is destabilizing the northern of the communal farmers is basically to do what we agreed upon at the land conference. And that is to make sure that we do the zoning. By zoning the protected zone and the infected zone in the northern of the communal area, you are basically creating a free zone that will allow farmers from the NCA to be able to access some of the luxury markets which they cannot access right now. And we understand the stress. That's number one. Number two, we also need to employ what we call commodity-based trade. As Mitko, we have just opened up the Katima Milo Abattoir, as I'm talking to you now. And we are basically going to apply commodity-based trade. I want to tell you that in two weeks' time from now, meat from the Zambezi region, and when we open the Rundu Abattoir, meat from uh, Kabango East and West would be able to be transported into the southern part of the country. Ultimately, in Sadiq, in the Middle East, and in the West African market, which we have opened. So the debate about removing the VCF, it's a critical debate, mm -hmm. and we should not take it lightly. But very important are the strategies that have to be in place to make sure that we are able to access these lucrative markets mm -hmm. without endangering the existing markets that we have. That is Europe, U.S. and China, where meat is exporting. Yeah. We don't want to endanger those markets. It's critical because they are sustaining primary production in the country. Yeah. Uh, Mulima, perhaps maybe you can just share who and why is uh, this whole idea being uh, opposed? Who stands to lose out exactly? Well, uh, in, in terms of losing out, the truth is that uh, we need to mainstream the northern of the communal area into the mainstream of the country's economy. And that's the reason as MITCO, we were concerned because we realized that one segment of the country uh, is generating value mm -hmm. out of the livestock industry, while the northern of the communal area is not. We have got 1.6 million heads of K2. Mm -hmm. So we have set up what we call the northern of the communal area subsidiary to drive transformation of the northern of the communal area. So definitely, producers from the northern of the communal area, but not accessing the luxury markets like Europe, the US, and China, yeah. they are totally cut off, and that cannot continue. And that's the reason why we have went to West Africa, Ghana, Congo Brazzaville, DRC, Gabon, and, and, and Gabon. They are all 
willing to basically make sure that they are able to buy the meat from the northern of the communal area. This is possible because of the Africa Free Continental Area Agreement, which was signed, yeah. the EFTA Agreement. Mm. So it has opened up the African market. So definitely farmers are losing, and we need to make sure that we bring them into the mainstream of the country. Mm. Now, as you rightfully mentioned, the MITCO has already taken advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement and the opportunities that it has now presented. As a farmer, perhaps, that's watching this right now, how can they be a part of this? So what would happen is that uh, with a directive we got from government as MITCO to make sure that, because remember, the role of MITCO is to stabilize Namibia's livestock industry. And we are clear in our strategic intervention as MITCO, and we are unapologetic that we want to save all Namibian producers, regardless of wherever they are. Mm -hmm. So we have opened up the Katima Mdilo Abatwa, Rundu Abatwa, and we are going to provide the Kenko support to the Oshakati Abatwa. So these three infrastructures I spoke about now will make sure that they will be supplying the West African markets. We are also in, in discussions to open up the Middle East market. Mm -hmm. So it's not about removing the BCF. Remember, we had an outbreak in the South in 1965. The fence is still here in the southern part of the country. What we only did was we deregulated the fence mm -hmm. to make sure that products meet from the southern part of the country is able to enter into China, into the U.S. and Europe. So it's about putting down measures like zoning, CBT. It's about market diversification, which as Mitko we are busy driving. So that ultimately we can deregulate the fence that is available there. Mm -hmm. That's what we are driving and that's what we want to see. All right. Milima, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this is obviously a very interesting topic that we can uh, talk for hours on end. But in the meantime, we'd like to wish you and the team all the best uh, as far as the export of the meat is concerned to Central and West Africa. And uh, hopefully very soon, our brothers and sisters in West Africa will be eating their jollof rice and their goosey soup with uh, locally produced uh, beef. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much.